they will lick their own blood, eat their own flesh, and the pit that a dog, they will fall into it. I'm very sure you must have read, heard this in the book of Psalms. Controversial Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, Aslam Femi Adishina, the special advisor, media and publicity to President Muhammad Buhari for labeling him a bandit lava. According to Gumi, he said, My mission has not failed, but it was sabotaged or discouraged by the same influential people that benefit from the chaos. Gumi expressed his thoughts via his known Facebook page on Thursday morning. If you're just coming across this channel, you came across it by chance, why don't you tap on the subscription button? If you've been listening and you've been commenting, why don't you join? Let us build it together. Tap on the subscription button and very importantly, the red notification icon bell below. If you have been here building this wonderful progressive channel together, I say God bless. You all know who Sheikh Ahmad Gume is. Is the man who we all saw sharing our money with terrorists, with bandits who wore military regalia and they had machine guns, RPGs. We are talking of weapons that can shoot down aircraft. He gave them money and this was done with the security agents not far away. And one would wonder why are they not after them? Why is the federal government of Nigeria treating these terrorist bandits, Fulanese, people from the north, aliens, people from the Sahel, in this manner, patting them at the back like spoiled brats? But they go after progressive minded people such as Shore, such as Inam the Kano, such as Sunday Adeyemo. Is it true that the mission of Sheikh Ahmad? Is honorable well he has made it clear and that's why I said they will eventually eat their own flesh drink their own blood they started confessing that there are people who are benefiting from terrorism from banditry dr. Ahmad Abubakar Mahmoud Gumi wrote war has never been a solution anywhere anytime you bootlicker that called me a bandit lover i am not one but my country lover my region lover my state lover and my people lover and humanity lover i am a qualified medical doctor who knows what it takes to precisely exercise excise a brain tumor without destroying the delicate surrounding brain tissues i was a commissioned military officer who knows what the military is for and what the capability of our military is. I am an intellectual with a PhD from abroad. I am an Islamic scholar who knows the immorality of killing innocent lives. So, silence for me in this ocean of oblivion is not an option. Only a fool would allow his dwelling to be a theater of war. Unfortunately, how many fools are there killing rats in your rat infested city room with an iron rod will only end up destroying your gardens, your gadgets and furniture probably without killing any. We should not mask our poor governance with artillery power. This is the man who said he's a qualified medical doctor. He did not say he's a brain surgeon, but he said he can precisely excise a brain tumor without destroying the delicate surrounding brain tissues meaning i'm a professional in what i do i'm not a lay man i'm not just one of those people in the northern part of nigeria i was even in the military so i know what it takes and i have a phd from abroad we don't know where the abroad is it could be anywhere war has never been a solution anywhere anytime what are your thoughts about this one? Do you think Professor Dr. Gumi is making any sense at all? Is it making any sense to you? Well, the man that I call the bootlicker, 
he is actually not wrong about it. Femi Adishina is a bootlicker, Buari's bootlicker, the Cabal's bootlicker. And Mr. Gumi is also a terrorist and a bandit lover. You know, they say thieves and robbers know themselves. They know the way that they operate. And these two groups of people know what they are all about. He said, my mission has not failed, but it was sabotaged or discouraged by the same influential people that benefit from the chaos or like us to destroy ourselves and leave the X-Men in perpetual ignorance. Some said we have tried amnesty, but it didn't work. You didn't try amnesty, but tried amnesia. Amnesty without rehabilitation, reconciliation, and reparation is no amnesty. Ask the former Ninja Delta militants who killed security men in the past what an amnesty is. What stops us from having a federal ministry of nomadic affairs where their grievances and complaints will be addressed? All the bandit leaders we saw complained of how some repentant ones were picked and extrajudicially killed after the surrender of their weapons. Without their trust of the very unjust system all Nigerians complain of, which they took arms to fight, peace and negotiations with them will not work. This brings our role of mediation. They know, as religious men, we will not deceive them. And they came out in troops to meet us. To our astonishment, it is the same unjust system that turns around to betray our peace mission. Some of the press for giving a negative narrative, whom I also term criminals in purpose. Some of the politicians who I see as urban bandits, who out of their sheer mismanagement of our migrant resources and misplacement of priority caused the death and infirmity of some of more people than the bandits affect. Of recent, how many Nigerians die of cholera, a waterborne disease, without because of lack of simple clean water to drink, or typhoid, malaria, and malnutrition? A nation with a maternal mortality rate of almost five fifty million, fifty thousand of 500,000, sorry, per annum because of the lack of adequate maternal health facilities and qualified staff. A country where its highly prized medical personnel is looking for a window to escape the inferno such a country, please. By the way, what you may not hear is that the bandits over the years have developed escape routes for, from area bombardment. They told us, you can only kill our women and children with your attacks. Just yesterday, two Contingents of banditry victims came to me that their loved ones were abducted by bandits in Kaduna suburbs. Riga Chukun and Keke, an escape, an escapee engineer in the later said when he overheard and understood that they were strangers in the area as they were calling the locals to lead them, that gave him the courage to slip through densely grown maize plantations to escape. The point is that if Zamfara is on fire for them, Definitely, it goes without saying that they will migrate to other areas. So, is the whole of Nigeria going to be under lockup in Comunicado? As for the economic impact of the areas now under siege, it's just a matter of time. You will hear them crying out. Already, yesterday, a man from Safe came begging because of economic stagnation. One would have thought that Gusau, the capital, is closer than Kaduna to Beng. As for those cynics that have no value to add in the Delima except vituperation and abuses, we know that is the substance they are made up of. No qualms whatsoever. You don't expect fragrance from feces. So what is the solution? Good intelligence? Good proficient policing? Engagement of the local headsmen in policing? Rehabilitation? Reconciliation? And reparation of all victims of banditry? The good, honest judiciary that protects people's rights. Money and time well spent on this will surely kill the disease and heal the nation of this delinquency, crimes and bad governance. Oh, Hala, on you, on your mercy, we depend. These are the words coming from the most educated in the north of Nigeria or one of the most educated in the north of Nigeria. Sheikh, Dr. Professor Ahmad Abubakar 
Mahmoud Gumi. Now, I'm going to throw it out to you guys. What are your thoughts about this one? What do you think? Is it making sense? I think what they do most of the time is to compare the militants in the south-south, militancy that spread to the southeast. They combine all of this together and say, if these people rose up to destroy pipelines, kidnap, saying that all available resources around them, aside the crude oil that is being, I mean, fish and many other things, they can no longer go to farm. They are making money from their land and using it to develop other parts. A lot of people are stealing money and they have nothing. If they went into arms, pick up arms to fight, to kidnap, to destroy, some of them even went as far as refining their own crude oil. If they did all of this, and they were granted amnesty because the government came to realization and they know that they have robbed them. Why can't we do to the same, do the same to bandits? And I kind of kind of um, try to kind of compare it together, contrast. I don't know if you are doing the same. What the bandits are doing, how does that add up? Did any multinational company or anyone try to take something off from their land? How did they make them less educated? How did they make them less viable? Who did anything to them? The bandits have no story to tell. The problems that, of course, maybe it is harder in some region, village or town than the other. The problems in your village, in your town, in your region, in your space is the same that you have everywhere in the whole of Nigeria. So are we saying all the people in the south should go into banditry? Terrorism, because the government is not good. I don't think the people of the South or Southwest have decided to go on that route. So what are we saying? Bandits, terrorists, whatever it is, you have nothing to stand on. No one robbed you. No one stole from your land. No one did any of this. I mean, directly, we know you have bad government. Why don't you go and bandit or terrorize your governor? Why are you kidnapping innocent people? Why are you robbing innocent people? We know that during the kidnapping the South South and Southeast, innocent people were kidnapped, not expatriates. They did it for money and they kept doing it. The last of them is Evans that we know of that went on kidnap rampage because he saw that it was something that a lot of people were making money from. We know that these were the spillovers of this. But what are the bandits fighting for? What are they fighting for? These are criminals. Common criminals. Vampires and wicked people. And I don't think amnesty should be granted to them. Amnesty for what? That is what I don't understand from this most educated doctor. Amnesty for what? What are you granting them amnesty for? That is what I need to understand. Amnesty on what? On, for what? What is it all about? That's what I don't understand. Did some multinational company come into Sambisa or the north of Nigeria to dig and to take? What, what is this amnesty about? What is it about? For a very long time, the people in the northern part of Nigeria and Buhari himself benefited from it. They benefited from a so-called system. And this system is affirmative action, whereby you give extras to people. You make it softer. Even recently, the governor of Kaduna State, Erufa, he said, stop reducing the cutoff mark for jump for the people in the north of Nigeria. What does that mean? It means that if you are in the north of Nigeria and you apply to go for medicine and you are a northerner, you can get access with just a score, for example, of 200. While the people of the South, they have to go as far as hop as 400, twice or three times to get the same. So what quality? Uh, no, come on, let us get it right. What is the quality? What kind of doctors are you going to get from the north of Nigeria? Maybe Professor Dr. Gumi, you also got that opportunity. Affirmative action. You scored 150. They brought you into the university there. 
allowed you to get admission while people had to score 600 to study the same thing and you call yourself a doctor and the other person is a doctor anyway let us know in the comment section what are your thoughts about it? <music>